everyone. Welcome back to State of the Art, a live stream show brought to you by our video streaming company, Mainstream Media LLC, located here in Chicago, Illinois. I am your host, Erica Shelby McLean, and on this show, you will experience live streaming insights, production tips, social strategies, and deep dives on various topics. Also, we want to use our show to test out new technology first so we can showcase them in future productions. Also, I want you guys to use the hashtag SodaLive so we can share your questions, comments, and thoughts at the very end of the show. All right, everybody, I'm so excited about this topic. It's very important. It is, in this episode, we're going to be talking about how best to engage your virtual audience when hosting a live conference. And to discuss this topic is in greater detail, who better to bring someone on than who has hosted five entire virtual events. Lori Sylvia is the founder and CEO of Rally, an online community forum where the best recruitment marketing ideas are learned and shared to help HR, recruiting and marketing professionals gain new skills, advance their careers, and deliver greater business impact. I welcome you, Lori. Hi, Lori, how are you? Hi, Erica. Hi, everyone. <laughs> We're really excited for you to be on the show. How does it feel being on the show for the first time? I'm very excited to be here for the first time. I feel um, honored to be asked to kick off your new season and excited to talk about audience engagement. And really one of my goals is to hopefully keep the audience engaged during this podcast. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Perfect. So what lessons do you have for us today? Great. Well, when I think about audience engagement, I think about three things before the event, during the event, and after the event. And before I get into those pro tips, maybe just to explain to the folks that um, you mentioned that I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Rally, and we have an online community um, of 21,000 talent acquisition and HR professionals. And really what we do is we teach them marketing. So we've had anywhere between 2,500 and 3,000 people register for one of our virtual conferences. And we do it twice a year. And we usually get about a third of the people to tune in live. So, um, so I know a little bit about this topic and I've been experimenting with all kinds of ways to keep the audience engaged. And you know what I wanna to do today is sort of walk through those three areas before, during, and after. And hopefully you'll learn a few things that you can apply to your next virtual event. Perfect. Um, everybody just make sure, you know, they are up to date with what she's saying so that you can use the hashtag soda live or below comment so that you can uh, share your questions and we'll uh, answer them at the end of the show. So Lori, why don't you get into your deep dive for today? All right. Yes. And I love those questions. So please, if you've got <laughs> questions along the way, cue them up and we'll do our best to get them answered. Um, all right. So before the event, uh, I think one of the things to do even before you're planning your uh, audience engagement is to really think about your goals and objectives. Um, for me, for audience engagement before the event, what I'm trying to achieve is to drive registrations. I'm trying to get as many people to get interested in coming to the conference as possible. And I would say that one of the things that I've learned along the way is not only to drive registrations, but also try to drive attendance. We want as many people as we can to actually tune into the conference so that they can learn the educational content that we're sharing with them and hear all of the great speakers. Um, and we all know that sometimes people just register for an event and they wanna get the, the content afterwards and, and that's fine. But for us, our objective is both audience acquisition and also um, audience attendance. So, um, a few things that uh, we've done is we, the channels that we have available to us to try to achieve that engagement before the event um, are really a few things. One is email, another one is social media. A third one is our website because we are, our, our main website is at rallyrecruitmentmarketing.com and we get thousands of people who are there every month. So that's also a way to, to share messages with them about the upcoming conference and try to get them excited and engaged. Um, and then the, the last place I would say is, is on our blog, which is part of the website, but the blog seems to have um, a personality unto itself. So the, the main thing that we're doing before the conference is we are uh, sharing information about who's speaking. 
and of all the different kinds of um, marketing content that I can send before an event to try to both get people to register and get them to want to attend, it, I've learned that it's about who's speaking and the content of, um, of their presentations. Because really, if someone is going to give two, three hours of their time, which is usually about the length of our virtual conferences, they want to know that they're going to, that they're going to learn something from it. So, um, so audience um, engagement is very much tied to the, the quality of the speakers and the content of your speakers. So that's one of the things that I've, I've learned. Um, another thing I've learned is that, you know, I, I really want to try to create buzz and excitement among our community and of course among their, their networks and their, their colleagues um, to try to spread the word and get more people to, um, to, to register. And I've tried a number of things there before the event. Like we have an event hashtag, which is rally forward. And we invite people um, after they register, there's a thank you page. And on that thank you page, there's some information. And we often tell people if you use the hashtag um, to tell people that you're going to rally forward, that you'll be entered into a, a contest and, and uh, maybe you'll win a rally t-shirt or sometimes we've given away other prizes. And I would say that that's worked like so-so, not not great. Um, so I just I think with our audience, you know, they're not necessarily the kind that are going to broadcast. Hey, you know, I'm I'm registered to go to this event. Even with the addition of a prize, maybe it sweetens it up a little bit. But I would say it's it's not something that we focus a lot of time on because it doesn't it doesn't really do a lot to engage the audience before. But one thing that has worked really well from a social standpoint is leveraging our speakers. We are really, really lucky to get amazing speakers for our conference. Um, the people who are who are who work in recruiting and in HR are usually really gracious and generous with their knowledge, and they want to share what they've learned with others. So they're always up for sharing that they're going to be a speaker. Of course, it, it helps boost their career, but generally speaking, they're also wanting to, to lift up their colleagues and their friends in this space to, to teach them something new, something that they've learned that maybe their, their colleague at another company or, um, or someone that they used to work with or whatever in their network can, can benefit. So definitely leveraging our speakers on social before the event has been, has been very effective for us. Um, what uh, another thing I tried that didn't work because I always think like <laughs> when I listen in on these things, it's sometimes just as valuable to hear what doesn't work. We tried one time um, to invite a friend. We had like a special form and you could list a few people and um, we would then email those people and try to get them to register. And then again, if anybody that you invited registered, you'd be entered into a drawing to win a prize. And I found that um, it did generate a lot of um, uh, names, but the conversion rate wasn't as high as I would have liked. And so we stopped doing that after the first virtual conference in case, in case maybe that works for you guys. And if it does, I'd love to hear for you, from you. Um, and I'm always trying something new. So before the event, one of the things that I'm trying um, this time is how can I really reinforce the community aspect because we have tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people in our community and thousands of them register to come to the virtual conference, it's a good opportunity for me to reinforce that they are part of a community, that, they're, that we are connected to each other, even though it's virtual. So I've got some ideas for the next um, Rally Forward, which is happening on May 6th uh, to try out. So yeah, so Erica, those are kind of my, my, my thoughts and my pro tips about how to think about audience engagement before the event. Oh, I love those. Um, very specific. And I kind of gravitate toward a, um, one of your points about social media and trying to create that hype and buzz uh, before the event. Um, tell us a little bit about what that hype and buzz is like, you know, on your end, like what kind of content is best to hype everybody for an event and how often do you use social media like a schedule um, to get everybody ready for the event? That's, that's a really good question. Um, I mentioned social is a big part of our strategy ahead of time. And we do focus primarily on audience acquisition, but also audience attendance. 
um, just telling people that we have an event isn't enough. I mean, you really have to bring out the what you will learn aspect of it. And, um, and so we, for example, one of the things we do is we create social cards for each of the speakers. It has their, um, it has their, the title of their presentation. And what we also do before the event is we interview each of the speakers mm -hmm. and we turn it into blog posts on our blog. So that when we're, when we're promoting the speaker, um, that they're going to be at the conference, we also can give the audience a flavor in advance of what they might learn from this speaker. Right. So we'll drive them to the blog posts. And then from there, we tried to convert them to get them, um, to register for the, for the conference. So, um, sometimes we send them directly to the conference website. Um, sometimes we send them to the blog. If it's, uh, if we've had a speaker contribute a blog ahead of time, again, I think even though they're going to hear from the speaker at the conference, um, leveraging the speaker's content and their expertise is a, is a great way to get people interested in the, in the event and actually want to show up uh, on the day of the event. Yes, no, I, I definitely agree with that. And um, what would be, what are your points about uh, during the event? Okay, so during the event. So this is, um, this is something that I really, really have improved upon. I'm like proud to say because uh, I, I think it's easy to overlook mm. the experience during the event. Like maybe the audience knows or don't know, doesn't know, but um, I partner with mainstream media to produce our events and they handle all of the the, the video, the recording, they all the all the logistics, the live stream, um, etc. And so I know that I'm in good hands because they've got the, the technical aspects under control. So I focus my time on the speaker relationship, the speaker content and the speaker delivery. Um, so ultimately, again, what is my goal for engaging the audience during the event? Really, I want them to get the material. I want them to have an amazing experience to feel like they spend two to three hours of their time that was well worth it and to learn something and then ultimately to use what they've learned back you know with 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 their with their team um to help help their employer recruit better so i i've tried to really think about the two the two aspects one is the educational aspect but the other is the entertainment aspect i mean like let's be honest like we we all want to learn and we want to get our professional development credits but if we don't enjoy the experience of it then it's like we won't do that again you know so there has to be both educational and um and entertainment and i've thought a lot about the actual on-screen experience as someone is looking into their computer what do they see and we've built a custom interface, a custom template into our WordPress site where two thirds of the screen is the, the, the speaker content. And the other third of the screen is Slido, which is an audience engagement tool that I'll talk about in just a moment. So really what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that first of all, they can see the speaker, um, you know, up close as much as, you, as, as we can. And Mainstream does a great job of um, editing between the speaker's um, uh, face when they're talking and also the slide material. But the other thing I've thought about is how else do I use that real estate of when someone is looking at the screen during the conference to keep them engaged. And one of the lessons that I've learned there is people want the slides in advance. And that was like a little bit challenging because sometimes like one conference we had 11 speakers and you know, that was like logistically difficult. And I was thinking, are people really gonna download 11 presentations and like print them out and, and write on them? Well, our audience really wants to do that. I found that actually it helps them to learn more that they're, they can, they can listen to the speaker and really um, consume the content that the speaker is delivering and also take notes. And it's a much more effective learning experience for them. So this last time what I did was I um, I created like a condensed summary of all of the speaker slides. So it wasn't like every single slide, but it was all the key ones. And then I made that a PDF that was just below where, um, where they would be watching the video. And I told folks, 
you know, if you want this sort of um, summary uh, learning aid, you can download this now. And I also send it to them by email ahead of time. So that, you know, if people aren't so like scrambling um, to, to take notes and match it up with the slides, then they can actually listen more and they can be able to engage in other ways. And so the other way that I've really um, that that's evolved and something that I've used two times now and I'll be using it for the third time um, in this May on May 6 is Slido, which is an audience engagement tool. And uh, it's relatively inexpensive to sign up for that for an event. And what it does is it allows the audience like right there on the screen, um, in our case to the right of where the speaker the speakers are speaking, um, they can, um, ask a question. They can answer each other's questions if they want. They can also alert me if there's something going wrong, um, maybe with their audio or with or with their video, because customer service is definitely a part of this. Um, so, but but the great thing is like they can also see that other people are live tuned in with them, and that really helps reinforce the community feel that we want. In the beginning, I didn't have Slido. I didn't even know that it existed. And what I tried to do was use Twitter. I, we created obviously the hashtag for the conference, which in our case is Rally Forward, um, Rally FWD. And we tried to ask people, well, ask your questions on Twitter. Um, I learned with my audience, they're not on Twitter. HR and TA people are not um, spending their time on Twitter. They are spending their time on LinkedIn but not so much on Twitter. So that wasn't really effective for us for audience engagement during, but Slido has been great. And one of the things that I've figured out how best to, to use um, with Slido is a polling feature. So in the beginning, it was like, how do you like this conference? Those are fine and people will you know, give you thumbs up or they'll rate it on a scale of whatever. And that's good. That's like my way of taking their pulse during the conference. But this last time that I did that was really effective was um, because I have all the speakers, you know, content in advance, I know what they're going to say. I created polling questions that specifically related to what the speaker was saying. And now this also reinforced the educational content that we wanted our audience to, to, take, to take away uh, from the conference. So, and it was a chance for them to like say, oh wait, there's a poll and this person is talking about what I'm taking a poll on. So it was a way to really like wake them up a little bit too and, and keep them engaged in, in the topic. So I would say um, those are some of the key points that I wanted to make about during the event. Um, and I, one thing that I would say that I am um, trying to get better at and still trying to figure out how to do this is uh, live answering from our speakers um, when people have questions about the, the material in their presentation. So we've tried a few different ways to do that. And I definitely know that that's an area that I can improve upon. I've, I've heard that from our feedback um, scores. So that's probably some of the things that I'm gonna be working on for the next conference. Wonderful. I um, really like what um, you said about, because I'm all about visuals. Um, and so I know one of the key things you're saying is like, what is the audience seeing on their computer? You know, and so <clears throat> I want to share with the audience, like what you're seeing right now is like a picture in picture. It's kind of utilizing two content uh, pieces on screen. So what you were saying, you know, Lori, is like having the speaker kind of on the side and then maybe their PowerPoint um, right next to them, um, just so that the audience can, you know, see the presenter and the slides, and then just kind of switching from that full screen slides, yeah. full screen camera up to the presenter, and then both. So I really like um, the point that you were making there. And also, um, before you go to after the event, I wanted to kind of touch on and ask you about, you know, content, 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 you know, something of, of, of making sure that your audience is engaged with <clears throat> the content of your event. And I know that it switches, it's your audience is different for any type of event that you do. Um, and so what would you say is like, mm, I would say like a base point or points that you would set up generic points of the conversation that you have with the presenter on like, okay, when you have that conversation with the presenter on how their content is, like, are there questions that you ask them? Like, what is that conversation? 
Um, it's the place where I spend the most of my time, as I mentioned, because I've got um, mainstream and, and you and the mm -hmm. team there, Erica, as a great partner. So I can focus on the content because the content is really the value of the of the conference um, right. for, for my audience. Um, so and I'm, I'm pretty tough on the speakers. I, I've learned along the way that that I have to pick a speaker who is a dynamic presenter mm -hmm. who obviously like really knows their stuff, you know, is an authority on their topic, but is also a dynamic presenter and is someone who can look into the camera. And 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 you've been with me, Erica, on some of right. these prep calls, you know, like yes. <laughs> you have to like that they, they want to look at their their screen to see their slides mm. but really their their engagement is directly through the camera um i've learned after working with like dozens and dozens of speakers now over the years that not everybody has the skill to do that and mm -hmm. so honestly now what because our conference is so popular and we've got amazing sponsors i let them know that they they have the ability to recommend a speaker. I need to talk to the person first. I need to make sure that they're going to be coachable and they're going to be the kind of speaker that's really going to engage our audience because, because I hate it when I get feedback scores afterwards and someone, you know, says something negative about somebody's presentation. And it's not so much that they didn't learn anything from that person, but they weren't engaged and right. that entertaining factor. So those are the ones that per, that do the best. It's someone who really is a great storyteller and knows how to like look into that camera and smile and, and really grab their audience. So I have to tell our speakers that and the ones that do the best are the ones that take that mm -hmm. kind of coaching. Perfect, I appreciate that summary. Um, so why don't you tell us about your last topic, which is after the event. So after the event, so um, so again, go, going back to my goals, what is my goal for audience engagement after the event? There's really a couple things. One is I need to keep them engaged like right after the event because I want them to fill out the feedback uh, survey that I sent to them. That feedback survey is really critical for me. I read every single one and I really listen to, to what it is they said about the conference. I am constantly trying to make it better each and every time. I also include in that feedback survey, what else do you wanna learn? And that gives me ideas for upcoming conferences. Um, even though we have this conference twice a year, we change the theme each time. So we really try to um, meet the, the needs of our community. So right away, I've gotta keep them engaged um, with filling out that feedback score. And it's done generally by sending an email right after the conference is over. And I'll also send them another uh, reminder or two to get them to fill out the feedback. But the other objective that I have for audience engagement after the conference is one of the things that we started is we have an online technology showcase that features the product demonstrations of our sponsors. And that's a really important part. That's That continues their learning. There's so many new pieces of recruiting technology that are available today. And our audience needs to see what's out there. And it's hard to go to every single trade show. So we try to create that virtual uh, you know, exhibit environment through our conference. So I need to keep them engaged and wanting to now transfer over um, their time and, and energy to look at the online technology showcase. And there's different things that I've learned that work and I'm constantly trying to improve upon that. Um, and the, the last thing I'll say on this point again is like, you know, one of the things that I'm gonna be trying is, is a nurture track um, in between events. So we generally have like a really good core group of people who have been with us for the last almost three years in our community and who love all of our webinars and our virtual conferences and they, you know, and they go to, to each one. Um, I want to develop a nurture track that keeps those people engaged between May and December and then from December to May. So, um, so that they'll, they'll be ready and excited for the next one and they'll block it off on their calendar and maybe they'll register early. So that's one of the things that I'm gonna be trying um, in terms of audience engagement, thinking about in between conferences. Perfect. I like that. You know, I'm always about post-production, always keeping the, 
the folks engaged even after the big event, so I'm all about that. Uh, I appreciate um, all three of your points about before the event, during the event, and after. Do you have any uh, takeaways or key things that you want to share about everything we learned today? Yeah, so if you take away two things, one is um, kind of learn from from my mistakes <laughs> and, um, and also hopefully some of the things that I feel like I've done right. And one of them is to really, you know, before, during, after, the most important is, is during. And it sounds obvious, but for me, during is thinking about the educational experience combined with the entertainment experience. And I'm always trying to find ways to improve both of those because that's what's going to create that great word of mouth and get people interested to come again and again. So the, the during is the most important. Um, and the, the second point I would say is to ask for feedback and to listen and don't be afraid to try stuff because as you can hear from me, I'm constantly trying and not everything works, but I'm learning what works and what doesn't work and hopefully making it better each and every time. So um, feedback is really important. Listening is important and, and, and take it, you know, um, take it well and know that it's constructive. And, uh, and if you just, if you just stay at it, I know that you guys will have amazing virtual events. I love that. Very encouraging. <laughs> well, I appreciate your deep dive today. I've learned a lot. Everybody in the audience, I hope you learned a lot too. I want you to comment your questions or say hello, give us a wave. We're going to do a live Q&A next and use hashtag soda live um, when you do commenting and ask your questions. Next up, don't go away though. We have the premiere of the 2020 demo reel. Check it out. Good evening and welcome to Miss Grand USA 2019. Competition brings out the growth in all of us. And I think there's no better way to sort of personify the power of, of this event. Welcome everybody around the world. Hello to all of you out there. The time is now for us to bring change to our city. We're from Blue Air and we're here to talk a little bit about our Prime Day deal. Welcome to Women's History Month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you everyone for being here um, and for all of the Facebook Live viewers. I'm Joey Fortman from the Big Mother House, and we're super excited to be working with the Op Games. We're having fun! Good evening, and welcome to the 61st annual Chicago Midwest Emmys Backstage Show. I'm Stephanie Mansour. And I'm Jeff Conway. Thanks for being here. Everyone is so pumped to get rewarded for their hard work Absolutely. over the past year. Welcome back everyone. Before we sign off today, let's answer some of your questions. Are you ready, Lori? <laughs> I'm ready. Awesome, here we go. All right, let's look on social media, shall we? All right, Aaron on Facebook asks, as a client, what viewer information would be the most valuable to you? Demographic, other? The, the demographic information or the audience information about our virtual conferences mm -hmm. yes okay that's a good question um so we gate our virtual conference someone needs to register in advance and then we provide them with a password to a wordpress page where then they unlock that virtual conference experience mm -hmm. and we ask them yes you know who they are um their their title their company 
Um, and then we, we look them up. We want to know a little bit more about them and the people in our community. So we generally know what industries they're in and also sort of more about their job function. Um, titles are all over the place in, in our space. But having that kind of information is really important about our audience so that we can know, are they recruiting for a very large organization? Are they Are recruiting for small? And what we found actually is that it's an absolute mix. So when I have speakers on, I need to make sure that they can speak uh, about their expertise in recruiting, not only for Fortune 500 organizations, right. but also for small and medium-sized businesses. So finding out where they work and a little bit about their, their company and the market that they recruit for is, is important to helping us putting on a great conference. Perfect. Love it. All right. Let me go. Keep going on Facebook. All right. Oh, we have one on LinkedIn from Michelle Mitchell. Sorry. I was going to ask about Slido. I'm interested to hear more on case studies and features most often used. So I'm not a Slido expert, but I can say after using it two times, um, I'm absolutely a fan. And it's pretty simple in that you, they have two experiences. One is um, it's just like a simple embed code where you embed it into your web page if that's how you're um, uh, delivering your conference, which in our case it is, it's, it's streamed um, to, to our, our website. Um, but they also have an app. So depending upon your virtual conference experience, maybe the app is gonna be best for you. And it doesn't require the user to Set, register in any way or sign up. They just need the event code. Um, that would that's important if they're logging in to, through the app. But if they're just in our case looking at our Rally Forward website, where they see the the speakers on you know the majority of the screen, and then we have um, Slido just sort of streaming and it and it updates in real time on the um, on the other side of the screen. Hopefully that gives yeah. you a little bit of the technical <laughs> aspect of Slido. And then as the administrator of Slido, I'm in there on the back end and I'm seeing questions come through and I can, um, I can, I can filter the questions if I need to. I've, I started doing that where people who had sort of customer service or technical questions, I could answer those without broadcasting them to everybody. But the ones that are more substantive that are good to share with the rest of the audience, you know, those go, those go right away to the rest of the audience. And then they can each, they can all see the questions and, and answer each other's questions, which, which is great. It brings in that community feel. Perfect. Thank you. All right, let's keep going here. We have Renee on LinkedIn asks, an app that sends out a survey immediately after presentation to attendees would be great. Oh, okay, it wasn't a question. It was a great comment. It is great. <laughs> so, you know, that would be a really good element, you know, to be adding and, you know, testing um, for your event. So I agree. So, you know, the way that I do that mm. is with Survey Gizmo. And I mean, there's all kinds of survey tools. Um, so we create our survey in advance okay. and we ask them um, to rate each of the speakers because I because the speakers also want to get feedback about how they did. And I also want to get feedback about how I was as the host and moderator. Mm -hmm. um, but then I asked them a bunch of other questions, as I mentioned, about, you know, um, uh, what else do they want to learn? Oh, and the two most important for me are um, would you attend again? And would you recommend to a friend? So right. my little version of, uh, of net promoter score. Um, and so we already have that survey set up and we already had the email ready to go. And I just, right after the conference, you know, just within minutes, click send. So everybody who's attended gets that um, email right away and it links to that survey. So that, that's how we do it. Perfect. I love it. Also, we have other questions. How do you find speakers for your event? Are you looking for influencers in your industry or just pulling from your personal network? Both. Um, actually, they come from a few different sources. Um, most of the speakers are speakers that I source myself. Um, once I pick a topic, I, I want to find who are the best speakers out there in the industry who can speak to this particular topic. And I really think about the overall agenda. What are the different 
you know, aspects to this topic that are going to be important to our audience. And there, you know, many people now I have like, you know, hunted them down on LinkedIn and I've sent them a request and said, hi, here's who I am. And some of them, you know, never heard of me before or my community. Um, and luckily have been really gracious to say yes. Occasionally I get a no, more often than not, I get a yes. Um, I also look within my network and I have a pretty large network now of people who are in recruiting and HR. And we have some mentors in our community, people who blog and who share their expertise. So I often tap into them. And absolutely, I ask the sponsors, you know, which of your customers are pretty successful or very smart or really at the top of their game that you'd like to recommend to be a speaker at, at Rally Forward. So I, I'm looking for recommendations all the time. And then a couple of times, including this time now, I also did a call for speakers to our community. And, um, and, and already I selected one of them to be on our, um, on our agenda for the next conference. Great, thank you. Right, scrolling through social media. There we go. When driving your audience to attend, how does a virtual event differ from a normal event? Yeah, so years and years ago, I used to manage trade shows, like hundreds of trade shows a year. I'm not even joking. Um, I worked for um, a Fortune 100 company and we had like a massive trade show uh, operation. So uh, driving driving people to a virtual event is is different because really the audience acquisition is on me. You know, it's it's not the same as like there's there's a conference that I'm going to exhibit at and I'm taking the benefit of the traffic that's going to be at that, at that conference. Um, this is, you know, that's like a traditional trade show. This is like our conference. We have to drive the traffic. Um, I think that if you're a company and you want to have your own event or you're a media organization or a community like rally, and you're trying to put on an event for, for your community, the most important thing is getting people to commit to the time because it's not a webinar. It's not like a one hour webinar or 30, 35 minute podcast. You know, it really is a time commitment and it has to be substantive. So again, we really focus on who they're going to hear from and what they're going to learn. And we rally is an approved educational provider for both uh, for two of the organizations that offer HR certification. So that's really important to our community is to be able to constantly have access to programming that can give them professional development credit. So, um, so we, we, we promote that as well. And that's one of the benefits of, of attending, but yeah, people need to like, you know, sit down at their desk and tune in, um, for, you know, two or three hours, depending upon the conference. And it's got to really be worth their time for them to do that. I understand. I appreciate that. Well, I have a last note kind of from myself, um, but also want to uh, ask you, Lori, and let you leave some final thoughts. You know, I just want to touch on, you know, especially the time that we are in right now and the restrictions that there have been with health and everything and uh, companies canceling, rescheduling, you know, conferences. I want to bring that um, confidence back a little bit more in the fact of, you know, we don't want your, your meeting or your quarter one uh, catch up, uh, you know, meeting to, to be canceled um, or to be rescheduled. You don't have to do that. And so I kind of want to bring this virtual event idea to the forefront even more. Yes, experiential events are great for people to come and join in community, but also from your points today, you talked about building that community also virtually. So I want to just give, you know, some buzz and amp and encouragement that virtual events is an option as well do you agree i think so yes I, it's all, it's all do it rally yeah we haven't yeah. we haven't done um live in-person conferences i have taught workshops like small format workshops but generally speaking for our conferences the way we bring our community together is virtual and we have people from all over the world that are part of the rally recruitment marketing community so it's the most cost effective way that we could ever bring our um, community together and i would say that um yeah with what with what's going on right now virtual mm -hmm. definitely should be an option that people can consider because let's face it on the one hand 
you know, we still have our jobs to do. Many people still have their jobs to do. Hopefully it's not going to affect too many people's jobs. Um, And so those folks that are in, you know, professional jobs that will be moving to working from home, let's say, they still want to learn. They still need to learn. And in our case, they still need to um, get the professional development credits um, so that they're continuing to maintain their certification. That's the case for HR, but there's many other industries where maintaining your certification credentials are also really important. So, um, so consider, consider a virtual event. And I would say that um, it also probably is very effective for meetings. I've heard of some companies, instead of having in-person sales meetings or you know, quarterly meetings with marketing sales and product, um, they can do this virtually. The, the key thing um, is to find a great partner. I, I know I found that with mainstream media, but if you can find a partner that can help you on the technical side, then you can focus in on, on the audience experience and the content. And that's, um, that's really something that is your expertise and something probably that you can do better than, than anybody else. So um, not to say that you couldn't, you know, pick up a camera and try, it's just, yeah. you don't want to bother. I don't think you want to bother <laughs> with all that. Lisa. So uh, yeah. I, I, I would say find, ma- mm-hmm. make sure that you've got the technical side kind of under control, then you can focus in on the content and you can still have a great experience, even if people aren't face to face. Exactly. And we love working with you, Lori. So we appreciate you joining us today on our show. Um, if people are interested in checking out your spring virtual conference, where can they go? Yeah. So if you're in marketing, HR or talent acquisition, recruiting, then please join our next virtual conference. So Rally Forward is taking place on May 6th. And the theme of this one is elevate your employer brand, which is super important for every organization that's trying to recruit. Um, So you can go to rallyforward.com, rallyfwd.com. That's where you can find our conference and where you can register. And if anybody had questions today and they and I didn't get a chance to answer them, like feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect with you and hear about what you're doing because I know there's lots probably that I can learn from the folks who are tuning in. And I'm happy to happy to connect with you and um, and answer any any questions after this podcast. Again, thank you so much, Lori, for being on our show today. Hopefully, you'll come back on and give us some more expertise. <laughs> I'd love- Perfect. Speaking of streams, remember to stay up to date. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And make sure you check out our website at www.mainstreamchicago.com to learn more about us. We're always updating with BTS photos, events that we're at, um, any new products that we're going with. We want to connect with you as well. So happy streaming.